Bogu, praise the Lord. There's a lot of us today. That's awesome. Um, you know, you know, you know. There's so this Thursday, right? And Thursday is almost the the second to last day of the week, and uh, and you know, it gets sometimes. Most weeks are, I mean, most weeks are pretty hard, you know, whether it's working, whether it's school, I think we can all agree. Um, but, you know, when we come into the house of the Lord, uh, I believe if you pay attention, if your ears are open, if your heart is open, you, you're going to leave changed. You're going to leave encouraged. You're going to leave blessed, you know, and that's the point when we come together. It says, you know, that when we get together, all of us have something to share and it's, and it's to edify one another. It's to bless each other. It's to uh, um, encourage one another, walking, continue, walking after the Lord. You know, um, I want to say, if, if anybody wants to make a reward, we'll not see things in the back, the earpieces. Okay. Um, so today I want to talk to you guys about, uh, so last couple of weeks we're talking with the Bible study about God, who God is, and, and, and how we should know Him, and, and how we should live before Him, and what He's like, and um, I think we've had very good talks, um, but I guess on the last, on the last, uh, on the last Bible study, somebody, I guess, didn't understand what I was saying um, about just, and we were talking like a free will, and what is God, if we, like predestination, free will, things like that, and uh, somebody told somebody else you know they said well brother tim is a calvinist you know now and uh, and this and that and um so i guys you know it's like oh are you democratic republican are you you know are you uh like you know the christian terms there's a calvinist arminianism are you Ar Ar arminian minium um you know i i want us to really look at the scriptures and what god says today just want to very touch up on a lot some things and I want to touch up on, on a specific things about that we as people, every single one of us here in this room, in our lifetime, God will give you a chance to come to Him. Every single person in this room is going to stand before God one day, whether you're saved, whether you're not saved, and you will know that you had a chance to be saved. Amen? Amen? I don't think anybody that's going to stand before God is going to say, nobody told me. Nobody told me. I don't think the people that are in hell right now are saying, nobody told me. I never knew. Because God is, because we were talking about, yeah, that God is so powerful, all-knowing. He's omnipotent, omniscient. He knows everything. He's everywhere at all times. He's so, God is love, right? And because He is love... He will show Himself. He will show Himself. And, and He's given us creation. He's given us a conscience. And He's given us church. He's given us ministries. He's given us people around us that tell us every day about Jesus. And I don't think there's anybody in this room that hasn't heard about Jesus. Because God is love. And God, that, and God is so loving. He wants everyone to be with Him for eternity. You know, Jesus, when he was praying, he said, this is eternal life that they may know you. This is eternal life. You know, eternal life begins here and now when we begin to know Jesus. When we begin to know his will. When we begin to know and hear his voice. That is eternal life. And so, like, I want to just talk about this. The fact that, you know, there's, there's these different views, Calvinism, all these stuff. But, uh, guys, I just want to... I just really quickly go through some verses that will kind of help us to understand this, that God is interested in for us to serve Him, but He gives you a choice. He gives you a choice. He won't make you. Okay? He won't make you. Okay? But let's open up the first place. Um, Ezekiel 33, verse 11. Ezekiel 30. I'm going to go through like five places. So guys, you can just put it up there. If you could keep up, uh, Ezekiel 33, 11. It says, Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn.
Turn from your evil ways. For why should you die, O house of Israel? Okay, guys, this is the first place, right? This is the Old Testament. This is where, you know, this is where it's, you know, you stone people for, for sinning. This is, this is the place where you're, um, you know, it's eye for eye, tooth for tooth kind of a thing, you know? You do something wrong, we stone you. We, you know, because there's a strict standard, right? That's set. And even in this time, God is saying, I have no pleasure in the wicked. I have, I have no pleasure for them to die. My will is for even the wicked person to get to know me and turn from his wicked ways, right? God in the Old Testament is saying, look, because I am love, I don't have pleasure in you when you die in your sins. I am not somebody that stands there over you and laughs at you and, and I'm like a tyrant and, I'm, and, I'm, and, I, and I put all these booby traps around so that you, you stumble and you fall. And God's like, yes. No, God is so interested in, the, in, in people's lives that he always continually says one and the same message. Turn to me. Turn to me. I want you, I want you to know me. Turn to me. It doesn't matter what's going on. Just turn to me. Come follow me. You know, that's what is so important, guys. Because look, how we view God, guys, how we view God is how we will live a life. How we view God is how we will live our life. So we have these two views. We have a view that there's pretty much no hope unless God, uh, you know, unless God somehow gives, you know, gives you his attention. Or we have this other view where we have a choice to come to this God. Okay, we have this view where uh, either God is a tyrant and just feed, okay, I wrote it down and feeds off of everyone failing and waiting for you for uh, waiting for you to mess up and put you in the sinful world to fail. We have this view, right? People have this view. God, okay, God is loving. God is so good. God is so amazing and all knowing. Why do you put us here? Why does he? Why do we have sin? Why do we have all these evil things going on, right? Or we have this other view. Or he's a loving heavenly father who desperately wants you to know him. And that's why he sent his son to be tortured for you. So we can live our life asking all these questions. God, why? Why did you let, you know, let sin happen? Why did you let, you know, sin come into this world? Why is all this evil going on? Let me tell you, that's because of sin. That's sin. We're in a fallen world. Or we can look at God and say, God, despite all these things that I may not have an answer to, I come to you like to my heavenly father. I come to you and because of your love for me through your son, Jesus, I want to serve you and I want to worship you regardless of what this world says, regardless of the things that I might have not have an answer to. Right? Amen? Yeah. Look, we have, there's, this, there's this article that I, that I read today. Because we need to know, because like I said, we, the God that we have in our mind is the God that's, that's going to determine how we worship Him. Okay, so let me read you a story here. When I was a child, my father beat me, left my mom, and ki once killed a defenseless animal with his bare hands. With that information, you could be quite justified in saying that my father was, was an abusive, cr cruel man. Okay, do you guys agree? Okay, there's another side to the story though. There's, a, there's some information that was left out. He physically, so this is my father, he physically corrected me when I lied or stole. He left, my, he left mom because he worked long hours to financially take care of, of his beloved family. When he found out a helpless dying animal on the side of the road, he put the poor animal out of its misery. And it grieved him to do so the missing information shows that my dad was a very loving man. Right? So we got these two views of a same person. But in one way it's described like this. He's a cruel person. And in another way it's described as, this guy's amazing. This guy's loving. He, he's so sacrificial. Right? And guys, the way that we read the scriptures, the way that we understand who, how God is and who he's like, will determine our life how we live it. Okay, let's go, let's move on through some verses and then we'll, we'll just pray. And I want you guys just to go home and, and, and uh, look over these places and pray about it. Um, Deuteronomy 30, Deuteronomy 30, 19 through 20. I call heaven and earth. 
as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give to them. Okay, guys, I want to pick, keep, keep this in mind, that God is everywhere. God is all-powerful. He sees everything. But yeah, he's giving a nation, he's giving people to say, choose me. Choose life, right? God isn't commanding them. God isn't making them. God isn't saying, if you don't, then this is what's going to happen to you. He says, choose blessing, choose life, choose God, right? God, the, you know, we're so special because we as people... We're different from animals. We're different from all these other things that God created because God has given us this free will to, to, to accept Him or to reject Him. And the thing is, it is fair all across the board. God created everybody. And He has given everybody the same choice. Come to me. You, you know, remember when Jesus he said, you're either for me or what? You're against me. There's no middle ground. But God has given everybody an opportunity, a, a, a time and a place where you can make that decision. Okay, let's go down. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 1 John 2.2 2, And He Himself, Jesus, is the propitiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but also for the whole world. So God sent His Son to die for, the, for who? For us. And for who else? The world. The whole world. God is interested in saving everybody. And He is not fair. He, I mean, He's fair. He's somebody that He gives the same opportunity and chance to everybody. You know, there are some people that... To try to find a loophole in the scriptures and say, well, what about that person that's in Africa or India or something that they've never heard the gospel? Oh, and they're going to go to hell. That's not very fair of God. If God, you know, why did he create that person just for him to go to hell? But you know, guys, I believe it says that in, uh, uh, in Acts 17, it says that in him we live, we move and exist. And he is not far from any one of us. And, and it says that when a person just, you can look up at, at the stars, you can look up at the moon, you can look up at creation, you can look at it, all these animals. I, I looked, at an, uh, looked at this bird on YouTube. The thing can make like 20 different noises and it can make uh, sounds of all kinds of other birds. It can make a noise of a chainsaw. It can make a noise of a, of a uh, fotoparat, you know, of a... Uh, what is it called? The camera? It's making all these noises. It just, it puts on a show for people to watch. And you look at that kind of a bird and you're like, that is amazing. That can't just, just appeared out of nowhere. You know, that, that kind of a bird, it's, that's amazing. <laughs> God, if you're real, show yourself. <laughs> Prove yourself. That's, that, that, I mean, come on. You're making the noise of a chainsaw. So God, he says that with the with sincere, he will act sincere. You know, guys, the biggest revival that's going on right now is in Iran. And a lot of the people that are coming to Jesus isn't because somebody is going and telling them something. It's because these people worship God and they worship, you know, obviously they Allah and they, and they pray five times a day and they're so sincere. Jesus shows up to them at nights in their dreams. And they come to him like that. You know, so often we're so worried about the person in Africa and we forget about the person that's in Idaho. You know what I mean? So many times we worry about everybody else. Well, well if God, what is he going to do in that person's life? Or uh, well, that's not fair. What about them? What about her? No, no, no. What's about you? Did you know him? Do you know him? Did you choose life? Did you choose to, to worship him? Did you choose to live for him? Do you know this one and true only God? couple more verses first timothy 2 4 
who desires, this is God, God who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Some people say, okay, we talk about the rapture. Yeah, Jesus is going to come take his church. What's going on? Why are we still here? 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Guys, I just want to say that by the, by the standards of Calvinists, I'm not a Calvinist. I'm not. I believe that God has given a fair chance to everybody. God has given a fair chance to everybody. In Africa, in Mexico, in the United States, everywhere, all across the board. Jesus, the Bible requires the same from every person. And He will reveal Himself to the heart that's sincere, walking before Him. And lastly, guys, I want to say this. That if Jesus came, right? If, if it says in like 1 Timothy 2.4, that God desires all men to be saved, and for all of them come to the knowledge of the truth. Do you think that we are supposed to do something about that? Are we, is there a responsibility that lays on our lives because of these verses? I think so. You guys remember what um, Jesus said, one of his last words before he left? Mark, okay, I'll let you know. Mark 16, 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to who? To every creature. Every creature. So guys, I want to say this. This might be like, man, why, why all this, you know, commotion about, about the, all these verses and all this Calvinistic stuff. But I, guys, I want to say this. That oftentimes we as people... We'll, we try to, you know, like a lot of theories that go around, a lot of doctrine, a lot of uchenio sakya, right? And people want to get away from the responsibility of, of living a holy life. Of, the Bible says that you're a, you're a letter that's, that people read every single day. That you're supposed to walk in holiness and purity. You're not supposed to uh, be just like everybody else. I'm not supposed to take a selfie of all my curves and be like, God is good, God, I'm Christian, and put a little Christian uh, verse on there. Which I see a lot. A lot. You're not supposed to do those kind of things, girls and guys. We have a responsibility that Jesus left with us. He wants everybody to be saved. And so you need to do your part in the kingdom of God to bring people into the kingdom of God. You need to be a person that walks diligently, wisely. You don't do what everybody else does. You don't dress like everybody else dresses. You don't talk like everybody else talks. Because the Bible says you need to go and preach the gospel to every creature. But if they don't see Christ in you, they're not going to listen. If they're not going to hear uh, Christ through your lips, they're not going to listen. If they're not going to hear, see Christ through the way that you love or the way that you care, the way that you uh, take, go about the day... People won't listen to you. They won't care about this Jesus. But if you put it in your heart and you realize, okay, Jesus came and he came so that everybody would be saved. Yeah, God can, can, can uh, show up to somebody in a dream. Yeah. So should I just stop preaching? Should I just stop working on myself? No. Because God wants to use every single person here to deliver a message to somebody else. So that somebody else can be saved. You know what I mean guys? I don't know if we fully understand. That hell is such a bad place. That Jesus had to come. Be tortured. Be crucified. So that we wouldn't go there. And we often live our life. And we often do. Just go day by day. We, we're disobedient. We don't want to listen to anybody. We're rebellious. We, you know, we, don't want to, we don't want to go to church. We don't want to do the right things. But Jesus came so you wouldn't go to hell. Jesus came so that you could tell other people, don't go to that place. There's something so much better. You can be with Jesus. And so guys, today, uh, that's just kind of my little sermon. If you have any other questions, we could talk after, what, whatever. But I just wanted to point out those few verses to us. For us to understand that 
We have a responsibility laid upon us by God. It doesn't matter if you're 14, 13, 12, or you're 24, or you're 28, or you're 65, whatever. You have the same responsibility, and you have to go and preach the gospel to every creature. Because Jesus came, and He died, and He sacrificed His own life so that we could tell others about Him. So we can go and help somebody else in their sin. Help somebody pull them out of the mud. Pull them out of that, you know, all, all the filth of the world and help them. You know, today it was somebody else, somebody asked. Oh, Mark, yeah, Mark said, who's saved here? I mean, I didn't see him. I just saw Ivan's hand, mine and Ivan's hand. But I remember there was a story of a youth group. When there was a youth group that got together and there was a... Uh, people were all sitting behind a table. I'm finishing up. And somebody asked a question and they went around the whole table and they said, are you saved? Are you saved? Mostly everybody around that table said no. They said no. These are kids that go to church. They sing. They pray. You know, they, they, they go to communion services on Sunday. They have Christian parents. They, have, they said no. They said no. And so I don't know if you guys, I don't know when Mark asked that, if you raise your hand, if you raise your hand just because, just because you want to look bad. But I want to ask you today, answer in your heart, are you saved? Are you saved? Are you a new creature in Christ? Are you somebody that God redeemed and pulled out of hell and are you now his child? Because the Bible says you're either a child of God or you're a child of Satan. Who are you today? And so we're going to have a little bit of time to pray, guys. Jesus came so that we would be new people. He doesn't want you to pretend. He doesn't want you to play games. He doesn't want you to come here and fake it till you make it. He wants you to be real with yourself and say, God, okay, I'm not saved. There's nothing that in my life that shows people or myself that I'm saved. So today we're going to have a chance. Today we're going to have, uh, I'm going to do an altar call. We'll pray. But I don't want you to come out because coming out to the front doesn't save you guys. I hope we know that. Coming out to the front of church when somebody says, come out, we'll pray for you. That doesn't save you. It's when you make up in your mind, in your heart. God, I want to serve you. I hate my sin. I want to choose life. I want to choose blessing, not cursing. You know where, guys, you know what repentance is? Repentance. Isn't just saying, sorry, I'm so sorry, God, I'm so sorry. Repentance is when you turn 180 degrees around in the other direction. And you walk away from your sin and you walk towards God. That's what repentance is. So when somebody says, the Bible says, repent. But I said, that means you turn around from your sin and you walk the other way. And people will know that, wow, he's walking the other way now. He's repented. He's saved. And so today, guys, we have a chance. Hallelujah. We have a chance. If you're not saved today, today's a ch time for you to be saved. Amen? I'm not making you. This is your decision between you and God. But I want everybody in this room to say, truly, raise their hand and say, I am saved. I know without a doubt, I am saved. Yes, I'm going to fall. Yes, I'm going to stumble. Yes, I'm going to be somebody that's not perfect, but I'm going to be walking with Christ and Christ walking in me. Amen? Хорошо. Guys, давайте помолимся. If you need to get prayed for, you can come out.